Welcome traders to today's webinar event. I am your host, Sean Kozak, the founder of Neurostreet's Trading Academy. And we're gonna be talking about profile trading in a redefined manner. Uh, essentially a new way for you guys to look at profiting from trading the profiles. And uh, before we go into every webinar, I normally like to cover a couple groundkeeping rules. Um, yes, we're recording the event, so we will be sending it out uh, after the event is over. Um, if you have any questions during the webinar, please don't shy away from typing them in the chat box. Uh, we can easily uh, get to them as soon as I see them or after I'm done teaching the topics at hand, I'll revert into the chat box and we'll go over those questions. Um, if you can't stay during the event, you got to skip, you know, skip out. We, we, we understand. I mean, we're just grateful that you're here. Your attendance is always appreciated. And uh, rest assured, we'll send any links for promotional offers or any information so you can follow up watching the recording and getting in touch with our team after. Okay, so we're going to be talking about some new concepts. I'm really excited about this because um, I do believe that profile trading is shifting the industry a lot. And I do think that it is, you know, once you understand how to read the profiles properly, uh, I do believe that it'll change the way you trade. Um, but, you know, what we need to do first is we need to be able to help build some trust behind that. I need to be able to show you why we'd want to adapt profile trading into our strategies why it's important and what, what can be done on your part to be able to execute efficiently on that. So um, before I go any further, need to cover a quick disclaimer. And while this is here, guys, can you guys just type a yes in the chat box if you're currently using profiles in your trading or, or if you're new, just type a yes and an N for new. Um, for those of you that are, are new, just type a new. And then those of you that are using profiles, type a yes. Uh, please note that, you know, risk in the business is evident. We're not here to advise you, uh, but we are here to educate and to instruct and to show you what can be done. And uh, please note that past performance never guarantees future results. So we're definitely here to make sure that we cover the risks. So when it comes to the event, uh, there's some specific highlights I want to talk about. Uh, I'll introduce myself for those of you who don't know me and, and give you a little bit of background on my experience. Um, then I want to shift into the reasons why you'd want to actually adapt or adopt these strategies, right? I mean, the number one thing in this business is that there's almost a webinar every hour on the hour <laughs> uh, and, and there's a lot of information to learn. There's a lot of great content out there and there's a lot of great strategies. There's great influencers on YouTube. There's great educators, ourselves included. We're amongst them as well. Um, the learning part of this business is really, really important. And when it comes to learning, we need to ask ourselves, what do we spend time focusing on? I think that's the number one thing that a lot of traders kind of get wrong right out the gates because there's too much information to focus on. And I want to kind of eliminate that today. I really want to help eliminate the noise and get into what I think is, you know, one of the most important topics that we should be covering as a financial trader. Now we're going to cover apples versus oranges, right? Volume profile is not market profile, but yet they're very similar. We're going to go over some basic profile lingo. I want to talk about proprietary splitting. So it's important that you understand what splitting auctions is. It's super, super critical that you understand how to split profiles and what those are. We'll go over the four or the three patterns that are all identified in the profiles. <laughs> and then what I want to do is I want to give you four steps to simple auction trades. So I'm going to actually teach you a strategy here today. I've been trading this strategy and I've been teaching it. And um, you may or may not know some of it. You may be new to trading profiles. You may be an experienced auction trader. Either way, I want to talk about what is relevant around the strategy and what it's used for. And I, I like to teach with strategies. I like to, to instruct with examples. And then we're going to go into um, a demo. I'm going to go onto the charts. We're going to look at some futures and Forex markets and we'll pull up some, some asset classes here and we'll take a look for some trades. And we do have a promotion going on right now. And so I will, be, I will be giving you information on that promotion as well. And then just for attending here, we do have a profile book that I've written. So I've written a, a book on multi time frame profiles and auction trading. And I'm gonna give you that book uh, so that you guys have that, okay? And then obviously at the end, if you have any questions, we'll go into more detail uh, following the event. So 
As I've said before, and I'll continue to say, as I normally lead into these webinars, I don't believe in fluff, snake oil, or false hopes. This is a business of money management. And I truly believe that what qualifies me to be here is that I've worked with thousands of traders and I've been teaching traders how to trade for the last almost 10 years. Now, what qualifies me to teach? I've traded SIM accounts, I've traded live accounts, I've traded managed accounts, I've been a trade leader on Collective 2. I mean, ultimately, I've been around the business long enough uh, to be able to, to know what, what's, what's good and what isn't. And also, more importantly, um, you know, I'm a software architect. So I build a lot of algorithms. We have a development team that produces programs and we build software applications for several platforms. So my, my, my passion is trading, my skill sets are trading and also software design, right? For financial trading uh, uh, algorithms. So uh, the nice part about that is, is that, you know, we've been able to provide products and services for traders uh, from everywhere around the globe. Um, my main focus in these events is to teach you how to use the tools that we're using. Um, I like to be able to help narrow down the signature trades and what that means is, um, you know, focusing on specific actionable strategies that you can take here and you could leave here today to trade with and then get you guys good at trade execution, right? Get you guys good at trade management because that's really where the money's made. A lot of people get excited about looking for trades, which is part fun and it's in and of itself, but really where the money's made is in, in trade execution, right? So why do I know this works? because we're in a trading academy and we've helped lots of people, right? So if you're interested in what we're doing here today and you have questions, my team is always here to help you. We've got product specialists, we've got onboarding specialists, we've got support guys that'll help you. And if you ever need to get in touch with any of our traders, let us know. Okay, guys. So let's talk about, I think, probably the most important slide I've ever put together uh, in every PowerPoint. Now, that's a pretty bold statement. <laughs> I've d I do about 75 events a year. <laughs> and I've been doing that for 10 years, so you can do the math. This is probably the most important slide out of every single presentation I've ever built. So we're gonna read it together. We're gonna talk about it. <laughs> Professional reasons to consider today's methodologies. Market profile was introduced in 1985 by a trader named Peter Steitelmeyer, okay? And it was introduced as a CBOT product, Chicago Board of Options and Trade. And the reason this is important is because the market profile is an intraday charting technique that looks at time and price, and it uses statistical curve analysis, okay? Now, we're gonna be looking at volume profile and TPO analysis. The TPO profile is called time price opportunity. The VP profile is called volume profile. Now, we gotta ask ourselves why this is important. This technique was created for exchange members by exchange members. Okay. <laughs> Thomas says, my book is much better than the Steidelmeyer book. <laughs> well, thank you, sir. I appreciate it. But, you know, we, we have to remember those who come before us. But let me explain something. This technique was designed by exchange members for exchange members. And it gave them a way to look at the market using statistical math information, okay? Now, I wanna kinda of go back to the point that it was built by exchange members for exchange members. <laughs> it wasn't written by retail traders. It wasn't created by the guy sitting behind his desk. No different than me. It was written by institutional, it was cre created by institutional participants and it was made for institutions. So I just want you to kind of understand something that as much as we all think that our objectives and our goals and our, <laughs> our vision in financial trading is important, we're really insignificant to what's really going on in the world. <laughs> Retail traders, right? We're just sitting here trying to make some money in the markets. Meanwhile, they're moving capital flow around billions of dollars <laughs> and they need to be able to have a way to do that so that they can do their business properly. So really every day what we all do in here is we get up, we make our great coffee and we get excited and we come into the markets and we're going to trade. But what's happening is we're going into their backyard, right? We're going into their yard, not ours. We're stepping into their barbecue. <laughs> we, we apparently aren't always invited. So if we're going to, <laughs> if we're going to trade as a retail trader, it's absolutely critical that you understand what you're doing in their environment. 
and knowing what they're doing in their environment. Because if you don't understand what they're doing in their environment, it'll be next to impossible for us to do our job in their environment, okay? Now, the reason this is important is because it's mathematically based and it's based off of statistical analysis that is driving the market based on liquidity, not indicators. Yes, we call it an indicator because it's used to indicate volume liquidity, but it's meant to be much more than that, okay? So if I were to ask you, why do you use the indicators that you use and why do you do all the extra stuff that you got on your charts? If you're not able to back it up by a premise of validation like this, then it's always secondary to something like this, okay? So this is the professional reason as to why we'd wanna consider it. Now I wanna talk a little bit about the personal reasons, okay? <laughs> The personal reasons to consider what I'm going to teach you today, and this is means reasons for me and reasons for you, is that it's not a lagging indicator. It is a trade map that is in and of itself the only leading indication the market has. Volume leads price, okay? And time is a static factor, which we can split and we can validate volume to time. So this will create a more relaxed environment for us to trade once you understand how to read the volume. Now I'm gonna explain this because the way that I'm gonna teach you some things today is you're never gonna to have to chase the market. You'll always be able to be ahead of what they're doing and you can wait for the market to prove itself so that we can let the market come to us. While you're waiting, you can do other things, right? You don't always need to be sitting there staring at your screen getting tick lock. The number one misconception that traders have in this industry is that they think they need to be a scalper on small time frames. You can scalp large time frames too. Traders just don't understand that. So the question I have for you is why do we want to put ourselves through so much risk by looking at such noisy environments when we can literally simplify things down and we can look at an auction on bigger time frames and then we can use it just like a smaller time frame day trader. Or we can trade it like a bigger trader as well, depending on your perspective. Okay. Now, Unless you want to stare at charts and you want to be, you know, sitting there and getting an aneurysm and your brain is flickering and the, the vein is popping out on the side of your head while you're sitting there with white knuckles and palms are sweating because you're watching the market go up tick, down tick, be my guest. But I'm here to tell you that I used to be that. I used to do that. And every time I try to go down into small time frames, I always end up going back to this. And why? Because it's so much more comforting. And that's actually more reliable. So if you ask yourself, why would we want to consider it ourselves is because we want to think like them and we want to be able to trade like us. And I think that's important. <laughs> How many of you guys think that would make a little bit more sense to have the market, you know, be a little bit more patient, not be so rushed in trading, but yet still be able to trade like a day trader, or trade like a scalper, as long as we understand what's going on, right? How many guys would agree that that would probably be a little bit easier to trade, probably be better at making money? right? Matt says, absolutely. Thomas says, yes. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to talk a little bit about comparing apples and oranges. Okay. <laughs> apple is an apple and an orange is an orange. I always like to use this example because it's simple, but yet they're both fruit, right? They're in the same family. They're in the same environment of food, but yet they're different. Well, the same thing relies about profiles and auctions. Um, they're, they're, they're actually, they're the same concept. Like we're still measuring statistical distributions, but what's happening is we're, we're, we're actually measuring different data points. Okay. So volume profile measures volume and price and market profile measures time and price. Okay. Very simple. You'll see here on the screen, I've got a volume histogram on the left and I've got a market profile TPO chart line graph on the right. Now, some of you may have seen TPO charts looking at like uh, with a whole bunch of letters. We do it in the back end so that it doesn't have to be done. It's all automatic, but we'll go into that in more detail as we progress in the event. Now, every auction 
whether your trading market profile or volume profile has has four main components okay you have the value area which can which involves the majority of the volume you can set it to 60% or 70%, you know, 68%, 65%, but most most all standard auction platforms or any type of profiling is always going to have about 70% of the volume that's taking place in the bell curve. And the value areas can consist of a value area high which is the top price of the value area and the value area low which is the low price of the value area. Okay, so if I'm drawing that on this, this, this environment here, okay, we've got the value area high, which is here, the value area low, which is here. This entire region is the value area, okay? And then we have what we call the point of control, which is the single highest point of volume where, where the liquidity takes place. <laughs> and when I first started reading auctions, I said, oh, I got that figured out. I understand all that. But one of the things that I didn't understand over the years, and I'm really understanding it now as I've evolved as a trader myself, is the purpose of the volume, okay? And I think that's really what I think that we need to kind of shift our focus here today, is the purpose of the volume. What do you think the purpose of the volume is? Because knowing the, the characteristics of this, this chart or this example here is, is simply just lingo, right? It's profile terminology. But what do you think the purpose of volume is in the market? Anybody here want to take a guess at that or take a stab? <laughs> Why do we need volume in the market? Confirmation, Thomas says. Anybody here? Can everybody hear me okay? Give me an answer. Why do you think we need volume in the market? Right? I want to be dynamic in here. Uh, the, the, you didn't come here just to buy stuff. You come here to learn. Okay. Liquidity. Matthew nailed it. Okay. Liquidity. You can't have a market if there's no liquidity. And the market ain't moving unless liquidity is, is plentiful. But you got to remember what I, what I say about their backyard and our backyard. We don't need much volume, do we, to do our job. They need volume to do their job. So we need to be aware of what that volume is telling us when we start to read a profile chart and how we start to read the auctions, okay? So what I wanna do is I wanna talk about the two states of what an auction can look like. There's two concepts. You have a merged auction and then you have a split auction. Now, almost all platforms will provide some type of basic profiling tool or an auction tool, right? Some, some basic stuff, right? Most all platforms are gonna have that and they're gonna have, um, they're gonna have a full profile view. What we can also do with our proprietary splitting is we have the ability to separate the auctions into singular distributions. And the reason this is super, super important is because we can separate value areas as they're unfolding in the market. So one of the reasons why this is important is because we can see the exchange of volume and the directional flow of the market as it's unfolding rather than leaving as at a full profile. Now, this is a preference amongst traders, how you choose to use the auction. It depends on the strategies that you're going to trade. So what, what we're gonna do today is what we can do is we can look at the merged auction and then we can fine tune some of the information, okay, by splitting so that we can narrow down some of the volume information that can be more efficient when we refine our areas of interest and we do business, okay? So what I wanna do is I wanna give you an example of what that looks like. Okay, so I'm gonna pull up a chart of gold futures for a second, okay? And this is just simple. I'm just gonna pull up a couple days here. So this is gold futures. Now these are in what we call a merged auction view, which means every single day, okay? One day, two day, three day, today, we have an auction, okay? This one here has almost this one, this one here, like this like this, you can see those, right? The, the difference is, is that that's just a full pr provided merged environment. What we're able to do is we're able to split these 
and we can come in and we can automatically split the auctions so that we can bring these auctions into directional flow of value. Okay, the directional flow of value is actually quite important. Now let me go back to the PowerPoint so you can understand why this is important. Because to an institution, okay, we got a value area here and a value area there for volume. We got a value area high here and a value area there for time. So we have one giant value area, right? Value area highs, value area lows, right? This is expensive and this is cheap in terms of business, in terms of buying and selling at an institutional level, okay? But as a day trader, a lot of times is that we, we're not trading with the same risk profiles as them. So what we can do is we can merge, we, or we can split this into this environment. This is actually the same chart, actually. This, this environment here is this. This environment here is that. This environment here is that. We're breaking down the profiles into, into separate auctions. And the reason for this is because you have a value rate high and a value rate low on every single auction because what was cheap and expensive down here is not necessarily the same up here. The market changes. So when we merge and we split the auctions, it's really important to understand how to read the auction and what it's telling us, okay? Now, when you have a profile, whether it's a full merge profile or a split perf profile, the important thing is to keep it simple. There's a lot of complicated information out there on auctions. And believe me, I've been sucked into it myself too. And I'm an auction trader, right? But what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you that one thing I want to leave here is, is the KISS principle. And I really, really strongly believe that if you just learn these three patterns, you're in a really, really good place. When the market is in an oscillating state, okay, when the market is in an oscillating state, it's going to give you a D shape. When the market is in an uptrending state, it's gonna give you a P shape. When the market's in a downtrending state, it's gonna give you a B shape. What do all three of them have in common? Um, I know I'm throwing some. Richard says the bulge, okay. You're getting there, Richard. Matthew says point of control, yeah. You, they all have a point of control. They all have a value high and a low, yes. Yeah, so that's important. Brian says point of control, balance value, okay. How about they all have a range of business? If you think about business, okay, let's say you own a restaurant, okay? And your restaurant is to sell cheese. I know I like to use a cheese example, but we'll keep it consistent. If you buy cheese for a buck, you have to sell it for five bucks to make a profit margin, yes? So you need to make a margin on business, whether you sell steaks, Kit Kat chocolate bars, Levi's jeans, whatever your business is, you need to make a profit margin. So you need to buy low, sell high, sell high, buy low. Well, the point of the auction is to be able to understand where that is. Let me use a different color here so you can understand that. When we're in each pattern, that's the purpose of an auction, is to identify what's expensive, what's cheap, and where the biggest important part of volume is, the biggest liquidity point. What's expensive, what's cheap, the biggest point of liquidity. What's expensive, what's cheap, the biggest point of liquidity. And the reason for this is because you need to have a roadmap to do business. You need to have a roadmap for your inventory. So if you're going to go out there and start buying and selling crude oil, or you're going to go out there and start buying and selling the euro dollar or Apple stock or whatever market you apply the auction to, because it's completely universal. How is it any different than buying and selling cheese? It's not. It's not. It's the exact same. The only difference is people don't understand that. If I'm trading crude oil, isn't it the same as taking an asset? Cheese tastes better, Thomas. Yeah, <laughs> you're absolutely right. 
okay? So the main thing I want you to understand is being able to identify what pattern the market is presenting and what that means to us. Let's go into a chart and take a look at this. So if I look at a merged view, and I'm using gold as an example, and we'll use another market, okay? If I look at a, 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 this market on gold, okay? I'm gonna turn off the candles for a second. Okay, I can tell you what the story is on the day by looking at this. I can tell you that this market was cheap here and expensive here, and this was the biggest point of liquidity. That's pretty important information. But I can also tell you up here, there was a bulge in volume and time. There down here, there was a bulge in volume and time, which tells me two things, that there was two predominant locations of business that day which means for a while, the market wanted to sell and buy cheese up here, and down here, the market wanted to sell and buy cheese down there. When I say the market, I mean the entire market. I mean the overall flow of capital from a liquidity perspective in the market, because that's what we're doing here. We're not just moving around looking at price bars moving up and down. We're actually in an environment where buying and selling is our job. So what we have to do is we need to remember that up here, this is where the market was expensive and cheap, to some degree, and then down here, the market became expensive and cheap. So what do you mean? Well, if the market's gonna drop down in a day, that just means there was more supply in the market. So if there's more supply in the market, the auction has to lower its prices. If the auction has to lower its prices, then we need a new range of business to determine what's expensive and what's cheap. And that's exactly what profile trading is all about, is about understanding that if the market can't withstand inventory up here and do business, it's gonna drop its prices and the markets are gonna do business down here. And if it can't do business down there, it's gonna drop its prices and do it here. And if it can't do it down there, it's gonna drop its prices and do it here. But every time the market transitions like that, there's always gonna be an environment where we have to know how to read cheap and expensive price points. And that's the whole purpose of understanding the patterns on the splits, when we come in to split the auctions, we can see, we can see the relationship to that. The market trended up, they did business up here for a while, they said, okay, there's not enough more, there's no more liquidity up here, we're gonna drop it down, they did business down here for a while, transition, they dropped it down, they did business down here for a while, they dropped it down, they did business down here for a while, they dropped it down and they're still doing business in here, okay? So when we come into the market like this and we start to look at what that looks like from a price chart, you can see this. Today, if you look at where they did business, okay, this was a D, this was a D pattern, okay, on the day, they brought it up to expensive price levels and they dropped the market. right here. So let me just kind of explain a couple things because sometimes when you have it in the split view, you don't see it the same way as in the merge view. So I like to look at it from both perspectives, okay? And the, the, the way that I like to, to and the, this, this is where I'm gonna start bridging things into a strategy now, okay? Is, is if the market has, let's say a day like this, right? And you've got, an auction that looks like that, okay? I want you to think like the big banks and just put a little line like this, okay? Those are very important levels, okay? So what I've just done is I've just mapped out that, that, and that, okay? So this is from today. So this, would, this is what I was doing here, okay? So if the market, is going to trade lower, you have two perspectives to be as a trader. You're either going to be a trend trader or you're going to be a reversal trader. So let's say the market's trading down, okay? If you're a reversal trader, then your job is to try to buy all of these levels as the market's coming down into them. Or you could be a directional trader and wait for the market to trade below them and retest them and trade with the market, okay? And the difference is you're going with the flow of capital. You're going with the entire auction, okay? And so I wanna teach you a strategy, okay? And outside of today's platform stuff, 
Um, so Richard's asking, is a re reversal trader a trader that trades rotations? Yeah, well, well, let me explain a few things, okay? So if you think about rotations, a rotation is this, the market trades up, it goes into a sideways consolidation, it forms a point of control, and then from that point of control, the market's either gonna do this, or it's gonna do this, right? Are you with me, Richard? And this is important because it's on topic and that's why I normally don't stop and do this, but this is important, okay? So when we talk about this, a rotation is a consolidation. A rotation is the market building positions. The problem with traders is they don't understand a bias. You are not an institution. So you are not able to take a bias like them. You have to wait for them to show you their bias. So let's say the market dropped from here, right? We, we traded down from here. So let's just say that was that and the market dropped from here. Well, that just tells us that the institutions built a big position here to sell the market, okay? Now let me ask you this. If the market trades like this and comes up to this, there's two ways to trade the same level. There's two ways to trade it. A rotation can be traded as a reversal trader. A rotation can be traded as a trend trader. It's you to define your bias. So when instead of us fading this market as a reversal when it came back up here against higher highs and higher lows, hoping that this, they're going to stop at that rotation, you can take two stances. You can sell the rotation or you can wait for volume to fail and buy on the proving of that. Because guess what happens when volume fails? All of the institutions are flipping positions. And that's really because stops are getting hit, liquidity rotates and changes. And you know the difference between this trade number one and this trade number two? Is this trade number two is you're going with the entire market, you're not trying to fight the market. So let me explain a few things. Take a look at this auction. Just this one right here, okay? Two is easier to plan, yes, and I'm much more profitable trading with the market. I'll just tell you that right now, as a trader who's got a lot of experience, I've made money trading reversals and I've made money trading trends, but I can definitely, I have made, why do you need volume profile to do that? Great question, because volume profile is what the institutions are doing to show you their liquidity. So I'll give you an example. Everybody thinks a, a trend is like this, okay? The only reason a trend looks like that is because volume creates that. The only reason the market stopped here, the only reason the market stopped here on the uptrend is not because it tested the highs. It's because it tested the volume that supported the highs. It's because it tested the volume that supported the highs. So a lot of people that look at just price action, that's fine, but volume is what creates the movement of price. Can't have price rotations, can't have trends, can't have wicks, can't have anything unless volume makes that happen. So that's where we need to know the relationship between price action and volume. So, and, and this is why you don't see anything else. The market can move without much volume. So let me explain this, guys. Stay with me here for a second. When we're learning, it's best to listen and then kind of ask questions when a concept's taught because then you can kind of see if your questions get answered in the demonstration. What I'm going to do is I'm going to share something with you. Big consolidation up here, okay? Boom, 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 okay? Do you see how the market dropped through here? This volume here just means that on the way down, they were adding some of their positions. It also means that on the way up, they were also building some positions here. But this was a point of control that they broke through. There was a little reaction. You can see the wick in there. But then what happened here? The market got to the bottom, they put in a bottom, they put in a bottom here, and they put in a bottom here, and they rotated back up. But guess what? The market's trading lower. The market's going down like this. So any type of buy volume that would stop the market here is counter market. Lower lows, lower highs, right? So as a downtrend, any volume in here is counter direction. So if you want to put yourself in the right frame of mind, I, I want you guys to think for a second, two things. 
there is only two types of traders in the world. I don't care what system you build. I don't care if you're using a six tick Renko or you're using an automated system or using a breakout or a Bollinger Band squeeze or an RSI oversold or bought. You are only two type of trader. You're either reversal or directional. There is no other type of strategy. A breakout is a directional strategy. A trend trade is a directional strategy. You're either going with the flow of the money or you are going against it. When you understand that, you have two decisions to make with every system that you ever use. Am I flowing with it or am I fading it? So let's talk about flowing with it for a second. If we're flowing with capital and we want to trade with the market, then the cool part about this, when the market breaks below, when the market breaks below, what it does is it comes back up and it trades below it. Now this volume here, is significant. So if we come back up to test this volume, this is gonna be a place where the market reacts from it. If they overshoot it a little bit, they're going to come into what we call a low volume node. The low volume nodes are always what we call rejection points to support the high volume. A lot of times what'll happen is that the market will come up to the point of control. They'll either react right away or they'll come slightly over it to test the low volume section. And if the volume is significant enough for them to hold it, they will drop it here. Now, let me explain why that's important. You can see what happened here. They drop it, they come out, they test it, they drop it, okay? They come back up to test it and they drop it. The reason why selling from high volume nodes with the direction of the market is much more probable is because you're flowing with the liquidity. Now, I'm gonna show you some other examples here. Okay, I'm gonna, we're, gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna talk about some stuff here. We're gonna, we're gonna talk, like, just take a look at this one for a second. This is a profile on the month. Okay, this is a monthly auction. So this is a profile of the entire month, not the day. So you can see the same rotations here, but this is much bigger volume. This is an institutional volume. This is a monthly profile. I'm just gonna give you an example. Uh, we'll go into some weeklies in a second, then we'll talk about the exact rules. But you can see that there was consolidation. We broke down consolidation for a while. We broke down consolidation for a while. We broke down what happened when we came down. We came back up to test that. And what happens every time we break below volume nodes, big volume nodes, every time we're trading with the market, every time we break below volume, we come back up to test it. You understand that? Directional trading, you're not fighting the market, you're trading with it, okay? So let me kind of explain what I wanna do is I wanna teach you a strategy, okay? And the reason this is important is because when you think like this, you're thinking like them. And when you think like them, okay, what you end up doing is you start thinking like a professional trader in their environment. And what's cool about this is that you can use the auction to trade specifically from the auctions or you could trade the auctions with any system, any strategy, okay? using that information to help you, whether you're scalping on smaller time frame systems or you're using some of the strategies that we provide. The best part about the auction is you keep it simple. The first thing we always do in step one is you wanna prep the auction. And when you, when you look at prepping the auction, the main thing I want you to understand is if you're a day trader or if you're a swing trader, because as a day trader, okay, if you're a day trader here, you're either a day trader or you're a swing trader, right? So as a day trader, it's really important to know your range of price for the day, the expected range of price, because you don't wanna be planning volume levels outside of where you're trading. You wanna be thinking about where the market's likely to go that day so that you can position yourself according so you don't do analysis on information that's not relevant, okay? The other side of it is you need to define, are you trading directional strategies or non-directional? Because the areas of interest okay, are what we do here. So we need to identify the range of price and we need to identify, are we trading a directional or non-directional strategy? 
okay? My suggestion, and this is just my experience, I'm not here to tell you what you should do, but I would truly think that trading directional will be much easier for a lot of traders starting out. So I'm gonna tar start, I'm gonna teach you both, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk to you about, um, I'm gonna talk to you about, you know, how to use both to your advantage, okay? Now, when we get into step two, which is the strategy focus, okay? The strategy focus is where we take our areas of interest and we draw the lines in which we want to take trades on. I wanna show you how to map out your lines. I wanna show you how to map out your areas because once you know where you wanna do business, okay? Then we're gonna focus into management, which then brings you into the entry and the exit. Where do you enter? Where do you exit? And how do you manage the position? Okay, because that's really the most important part. We need to bring you through the decision tree so that after every trade, you can review your trades, study it, take screenshots and write reviews and, and basically track your performance, okay? Does everybody understand that? I like to take people through a, a linear process so that everybody knows what I'm about to teach them because when you learn a strategy, you have to kind of learn it in steps so that you can actually do it yourself, right? Because if you just try to do everything just watching me without learning it, it doesn't really make sense. So can you guys give me a yes that, that you understand this? I know some of you may not. Maybe you're new in here. Or you've never been to one of my events or anything like that, but everybody's kind of got a handle of that. Okay, perfect. So the first thing I want to do is I want to talk about the overview. The premise for this trade, so this is the summary of the trade, okay? The premise for this trade is that we're using 30 minute charts, 30 minute charts to locate point of controls, okay? And the reason is because this is where big money is dictating the sentiment based on liquidity. Now we use the 30 minute, now this is important, we use the 30 minute because the volume profile levels can also be traded on that but also like a scalper. And when you use smaller time frames, it can be noisy and less reliable. Now here's the best part. I am a hybrid trader. A hybrid trader uses, I think I did that right, hybrid. It uses higher time frame levels and I scalp using smaller time frame trade management. And the reason for this is because I don't like to be noisy and have to be reactive to the market and I can keep my stops and targets based off the same objectives as I was a smaller time frame day trader. Now, if you're talking about, well, I wanna scout for three ticks, now you're in HFT territory and that's just completely outside of anything that we're talking about. But if you're a day trader and you're looking maybe a 10 tick stop on crude oil, right? Or, you know, a couple of points on the S&P, right? Or a point and a half on the S&P or whatnot. I mean, it's not that big of a deal, right? It's, it's just, you don't need to be doing it on a four tick range bar, nor would you want to using an auction, okay? So what I'm gonna do is you can also apply this, okay? And the reason I say see lessons on this in the strategy focus course is because I teach this to a lot of our traders. Like I'm giving you some pretty good nuggets here right now, guys. Some of the stuff I'm about to teach you is actually taught in our advanced courses, in our, in our mastermind classes and stuff. And I thought it'd be really, really good because a lot of traders have asked me about auction trading and they, 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 they're, they're, it's, there's so much information out there. I just want to kind of give you some insight into this. This is actually pulled directly from some of our more advanced courses, okay? So the key here is that this is both directional and non-directional. So I'm going to show you both. You can trade it as a reversal and you can trade it as a trend trade, okay? Now, there's obviously other forms of areas of influence that you can use to enhance your analysis, but we're gonna specifically just focus on the volume for this example, okay? Now, the first thing I wanna do is I wanna talk about the daily range prep. The daily range prep is very important because there's two types of, of daily range prep, okay? The daily range prep is where we ultimately want to know where the market's likely to trade for the day. Now the blue lines are the prior days high and low. The yellow lines are the daily max average range. So I normally take the farthest levels of the four. So if I'm sitting here, this, this one would be here to here. This one would be here to here. This one would be here to here. 
I take the entire range of the four. Because sometimes, you know, you're going to have levels there, there, and then one's way down here. I would take the range of this. Because if I'm sitting here at current price, there's a chance that fundamentals can drive the market up to the max daily ATR or drive it down to the max daily ATR. Or if we're sitting here on the open, there's a chance they could go down to test yesterday's low or they could take it up to the max ATR. We don't know this, but we need to know that if you're trading up here, you don't need to be planning levels down here today, right? And it's all about not overwhelming yourself with too much prep when you're looking at several markets. Give me a yes that everybody understands this. The blue lines here you can actually use. It is, it is free. The blue lines are on, on every platform, prior high and low of day, and it's pretty basic, right? But the yellow lines we actually coded as an indicator, and this is a free indicator as long as you're a subscriber to our trading room. So if you're not and you want access to the yellow levels, you'd have to do that manually using daily charts but I'm just here to tell you that that's what we do when we trade these levels. The yellow lines are the max daily average true range. So if you wanted to do that yourself, you would need a daily chart. You'd have to calculate that, but I can, if you're interested in the yellow indicator, just let us know and we can get you in our trading room and you can get the indicators for free on your first month subscription. Okay. So here's the thing. The big thing about trading. Okay. When, when we're trading, I want you to understand there's two scenarios. You have an inside day or an outside day. An inside day or an outside day creates different characteristics of the market. Uh, Skip saying, Sean, sorry to ask this question and keep you off topic, but I have to go. Okay, so uh, my trading room runs 8.30 pre-market to, uh, to noon approximately, okay, every day. Uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, excuse me. Yeah, we run our, our, our room Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. That's going to be changing here in the near future because we're going to be opening up several trading rooms. So there's some changes coming, but we've got some great things coming. So if you have questions, we'll shoot you an email and you can follow up with Jeff and the guys. So let's get back here, guys. Uh, inside versus outside days. An outside day are when prices are breaking out of the prior day's ranges. Okay, so I'll give me an example. If I have yesterday's ranges here, and we're trading here, an outside day would be we break outside of it, okay? An outside day would be break outside of yesterday's lower high. So if I'm here, this is yesterday's high of day, yesterday's low of day, okay? An example would be if I break below the low of yesterday's auction, what that means is value, the value areas and the profiles are shifting outside of yesterday's auction. So this is normally what's gonna happen in trending conditions. So these types of environments are very difficult for reversal trading. We seen that today in the indexes, did we ever? Like they sold those off. And if we go back and take a look at the NASDAQ and the S&P, there was some wicked shorts when they came back to retest the volume levels on today. Why? Because it was a trending market. And on conditions on trending markets, when you can trade directionally, you're going to make money. Okay. The best type of these are when we start to see them breaking outside during the overnight. So when we start to see them trading outside of these yesterday's lower high of day auctions in the US or the overnight session in the Globex, and we come into the US market, you're going to see that. Okay. On an inside day, on an inside day, you're going to have the market trading inside of these markets. Normally you're gonna have these in D distributions. Normally you're gonna have these in a range markets. So a lot of times you really wanna understand that they might, they, these are more evidently suitable for reversal strategies, right? And if you are trend trading, you're, which if you are a directional trader, you wanna make sure that you're not expecting really large follow through on these big moves because sometimes the market's not going to do that today. So knowing the different climate is really, really important for the type of trader that you are. If you're more of a directional trader, you're going to want to pay attention to Bs and Ps and if they're breaking outside of the prior auction. You also want to know if you're a reversal trader, you want to be looking at D-shaped distributions. Now, what I want to do is I want to talk about the reversal trade first, okay? But before I go into that, let's take an example of this. 
Okay, let's go here. An example. This is gold. Change this for a second. Okay, so if we were to split these auctions, okay, you can see what happened here yesterday when they broke below. This was yesterday's low of day. When they broke below it, it became a trending day with a B-shaped distribution. Today, they couldn't break down below the lows, and as a result, they stayed in a range, okay? Very, very important to understand that. We're still in technically on an inside day on gold. We haven't traded below it with the value, okay? So I just want you to understand the different characteristics. Up here, when we breaked outside of yesterday's auction, on the prior day's auction, this was yesterday's high, which was from here. When we trade outside of it, the market was very, very, they were very concerned here. They, you notice how long it spent here? Those are 30 minute candles. <laughs> the market was deciding, are we gonna build, are we gonna pop, or are we gonna drop? And they couldn't break out into a further trending day. So they brought it back inside the range. Still trending, uptrend and downtrending markets, but they couldn't stay in an outside day. And then normally after that happens, they'll stay on an inside day in the next day, okay? So these are really important things to pay attention to. So if you're looking at trend trading versus reversal trading, if you're gonna be implementing strategies, you wanna know the climate of the market so that you can represent the right strategy for those conditions. Now I'm gonna teach you both, okay? This is a point of control support trade, but it's a reversal, okay? So what we do is we identify the nodes on the point of controls in the auctions. And when price comes down to an untested auction, this is very important, I want you to write this down. Untested. An untested auction means that we have a big point of volume here. We traded all the way up. We never came down to test the point of control came all the way back down. We never came down to test the point. They tested the wall of volume here, not even quite. They tested this. See that point of control was tested here? Okay, they were never tested on this. And so what we do is we look for fresh auction point of controls that have never been tested. And when price gets to them, we fade them along. This is a reversal. You would buy the point of control support, okay? Your stop loss is going to be based on two things, ATR or volume. ATR, another free indicator in our trading room. If you're subscribing to our trading room, you will get this indicator for free. It will tell you your stops. It'll tell you your minimum stop, your average stop, your maximum stop, and your current stop. We call this the stop finder. It's a volatility grid that basically tells you your trade management. It's a free indicator when you subscribe to our trading room. Okay, now this point of control, if I'm going to buy this, if I'm going to use a volume stop, I need to be at low volume. My stop needs to be below the low volume. If I'm using an ATR stop, my ATR would be one of these. It depending if I'm scalping, if I'm swing trading, depends on your objective, okay? Now, this is a reversal trade. It's counter direction, why? Because we're taking out the structure, fading the market. It's an aggressive trade. Reversal trading is aggressive. It is not a conservative approach. Same thing with the short, point of control. What I like about this one is it's, it's testing major levels for the day. Major levels means high of day and prior, uh, or it's also testing the max ATR. So you can see this is an untested auction high right here, an untested auction point of control that's never been touched. Price tried to get up here, tested the wall, never tested the point of control. It's considered fresh. Price came back up to the tick on the point of control. We normally take the, the volume right in front of it. We normally wrap our lines. I'm gonna show you how to do that here, guys, so don't worry. We're gonna draw them together. And then what we'll do here is we will then 
basically look to short this. Now, why is this an aggressive trade? Because we took out structure highs to get there. So if they did come down to test this, there's a chance that they could lift back through here, but it's a fading reversal strategy. It's a reversal play based off point of controls that are fresh. Now these are reversals. Reversals are aggressive, especially when you're going against structure on a big time frame. especially if you're trying to scalp those levels on a smaller time frame. Right? I'm going to teach you the other side of it now. The trend trade is when we see a very large lift from the point of control in the direction of structure. So whenever price lifts above the structure on an area of big volume, price lifted straight up here, boom, and they came right down in to test the volume node. I know some traders that would tr take the trade right at the edge here and they would put their stop right at the bottom. I know other traders that'll trade right here at the level and they'll put their stop right at the bottom. That's a volume based stop. If you're entering right here at the level, you can also use the stop finder, which will tell you your minimum maximum stop. Your minimum stop on this one would have been 15 ticks. I don't know which market I took the picture from, but this is an example of a scalp level or a swing level, okay? If you're scalping this level, you're getting in at the, white, the yellow line, you put 15 ticks, T1, T2, T3. If you're swing trading this level or day trading it with bigger stops, your target, your entry is here. Your current stop would probably be about down here. T1 would be up here. Just depends on who you are. If you're somebody that is, is uh, a scalper or if you're somebody that's a swing trader, it just depends on your trade management objectives. Either way, the level is still the same. Same thing here, guys. Take a look at this example. This is a directional trade volume node here. Structure comes down, lower low in price, comes up, hits the point of control. If your stop loss is here, low volume, stop goes here. Or minimum stop would be 10 ticks on this one at the point of control. If that was the case, 10 ticks plus here. Okay. And then your targets are either based off risk and reward or volume levels. Your targets in your stop can be based off volume or based off average range, okay? Now, what I wanna do is I wanna go and look at some trades. I wanna go in and I wanna actually, I wanna pick some markets. And here's the fun part is I don't have a market that I care about. So I'm gonna let you guys tell me which market we're gonna do the analysis on. So it's kind of like a complete, new thing for me. I don't care which market, as long as it's futures or Forex, I don't have the data. Okay, so if you guys could put in, uh, we're gonna take a look at some futures first. Now, I, I was going to, we'll, we'll, we, I've got three different modes here, so just so you guys understand what this is. Just so you guys understand what this is, this is a monthly profile, this is a weekly profile, and this is a daily profile. Our, our software, just so you understand the difference, our software has the ability to switch the modes so that I can look at bigger perspectives, smaller perspectives of the auction. And I also have the ability to split and merge and control the granularity of the histograms. So if I wanted to make the, the volume more, more larger or more smaller, watch what happens when I, I change the granularity down here. Okay, I'm gonna, I'll just change it to a five. It's gonna take a second to load here for a second, okay? Let me give it one sec here. I'm loading a monthly profile, so it's gonna be a little bit longer. It's gonna take a lot longer. It's loading a lot more data there. But you see how the volume looks a bit different? It's because I can change the granularity of the histogram to be more, more, uh, more, more of that nature. Now I'm gonna go in here and put this into uh, merged view. It'll load faster in merged view there. <laughs> okay, so let's see here, we got yeah, Maurice says Forex. Well, there's a lot of Forex pairs, Maurice. You need to tell me. Um, 100% you can trade using the point of control, Jean. Yeah, Jean, yeah, give me this. We've got a couple of traders want crude, ES, and NASDAQ, okay? So uh, what we're gonna do here on, let's go and take a look at the NASDAQ. It was the weakest market here. I'm just gonna use the daily for this. Maurice, we'll look at Forex in a second. So I'm gonna go in here and give me one second. I just wanna make sure I'm not in split mode for a second, perfect. And then we're gonna go and we're gonna look at the NQ. Okay, 
Now, I want to tell you where the short was on the NQ this morning, okay, because you, you definitely didn't want to buy the longs. <laughs> the NASDAQ was the weakest market. We're going to go and we're going to talk about, I'm going to make this a little bit larger because it's a pretty thin market, pretty, pretty, the ticks are thin, okay. So I want to just, I want you to understand this as this market traded down, okay. Every single one of these nodes on the way down, okay, is big money liquidity, okay? But I want you to pay attention to a few things, okay? The bigger the node, the more significant. The bigger the node, the more significant, okay? And I want you to write a rule down. If I have a point of control, I need to see a big move away from it in order for me to want to trade it. Rule number one. Every level has to have a significant drop from it. So let me explain this. This has not had a significant drop from it. We're stabilizing here. This had a significant drop here. We came all the way down and we came all the way back up to test the node. This is smaller than this. We want the big nodes. This one up here is big. This one here is big. Okay. So the trade on the NASDAQ that happened after the trade room closed this morning, because that we were waiting for the pullback on these markets. Okay. Let's go into this. So I want to take, I want to show you what I, I like to do. We're talking big moves here, guys. These are 30-minute charts, and this is the NASDAQ, okay? These are big candles. So let's take a look here for a second. I want you to pay attention to this. Big volume stepped into the market, stopped the market to the lows. We're not trying to buy the market. Why? Market's going like this. So what I want to do is I want to wait for the retests to come down, bop, 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 Okay. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go in here. We're going to take a look at this. We're going to go and we're going to stay in draw mode. Perfect. We're going to take every single node just like this. This is not as big. It's not a significant node. These are much bigger than this one and this one. If you got three nodes here, which one stands out? This one down here wasn't happened at that time, so we'll give it some time to play out. Price traded through. When price trades through this volume, okay, support becomes resistance. And we're not talking about indicators here. We're talking about volume. So this is volume support, volume resistance. Okay? So when we get below it, 11,920 all the way down to 11,740, that's a significant move. So when price comes back up to test this, okay, when price comes back up to test this, what did it do? This is the short. Does everybody see this? Okay. Now, based off volatility, you need a volatility-based environment. I prefer to have the, the stop finder on here, and the volatility was very high on the NASDAQ here, so you would have had to have a little bit of a larger stop, okay? But it still shows you where that level was, okay? This is a very, very sexy trade. Now, I want to talk about the S&P. At the same time, the S&P wasn't as volatile as okay, the, the NASDAQ. But what I want to do is I want to talk about what happens here. Price broke down in here. Okay, I personally, and this is me, okay, don't like when I have a whole lot of candles here. I don't like a whole lot of bars. I don't like it. 
because the market's stabilizing and it's more noisy. So what that means, if price can come back up, I would rather have nodes with a couple candles, two or three, than one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Now, if this point of control comes in here like this, I just need you to understand that when we come back up to test this, this right here, let's put a little line here. This is the node, okay? If they cannot drop from this point of control, they're going to come up to test the low volume up here, which they're doing. But I don't like, I don't understand your question. If you have a question, please ask it in detail so I can help you. Why, I'm not sure, Ricardo. You have to ask what, why what? Wicks are difficult to see. Well, let's widen the candles. There we go, okay? because the market will stay there longer. So if you think about this, that means a lot of liquidity is happening here and they broke down here. So if they come up, they could stay a lot longer here. The market could not stay a long time here and they dropped on significant volume. I don't wanna be in a market where the market likes to stay there for a long time. I don't prefer that, it's not my style. I've always just seen that it's been much better. Like this here, significant volume node on the NASDAQ over a very short period of time. That's a 30 minute candle ending, 30 minute candle starting. And we're probably ranging there for like maybe 10 minutes max with a massive volume peak, which means that if price comes, if price is coming down like this, but if price breaks back up, then it would become a reversal trade. It would not be a trend trade. You need to look at the structure, okay? So a couple things here, guys. I wanna take a look at a different market and we'll take a look at the S&P real quick. The S&P did the same thing. I'm gonna change the tick granularity. The S&P is a little thicker market. So we're gonna bring this down to say like a four. So on this bar down, I want you to see a couple things here. I'm gonna draw a couple lines here for you. Okay. Out of these three nodes on the way down, which one's the biggest? Which price level is the biggest node? You tell me. Biggest node is important. You want the bigger nodes, not the smaller ones. This one, price dropped here, okay? Price came back up, that's an opportunity to short, okay? Tested it, dropped. Same trade as the NASDAQ, only this market's less volatile. It's the exact same trade as the NASDAQ today on the shorts. We were talking about it in our trading room today. For those of you that were there today, we were talking about it. If we can get a pullback to one of these big nodes, I want to short these markets. Okay. This was a wicked short. Now, after such a long drop, I'd be careful shorting the point of control down here because of how much time it's spending. The, the train is ending. Okay. So they may want to keep it here for a bit. They may come back up to test this again. The better trade is an untested auction. Here. Okay. As a trend trader, as a reversal trader, if the market does this, breaks up, isn't that a reversal? We don't want to take that. But what I will do is if, I, if this node stays here and gets bigger, I will do this. Buy that. I will buy that. Because that is a directional volume trade. And that is the trend trade. So just like this was the trend trade short, this would be the trend trade long. On volume nodes. Has to be big point of controls. These big nodes are liquidity pinpoints. Okay? Pinpoints, not just one point of control, every major point of control that the auction produces. 
Now, if we split these, you're going to get a little bit of a different read. You're going to see those nodes here, but you're going to see we're in a very downtrending market. But you can see that you can also use the split modes to produce these areas. This one's not as significant as this one. This one's a stronger level. This one's already been tested. You can see that. I would not trade it to the short side, but if the market breaks up, I would look to trade it to the long side. But I need to see a significant breakup before pulling back because every time you have a point of control, I want you to think you want them to prove themselves from the volume before they come and test it. What is the point of control? The point of control is liquidity. That's all it means. I don't want you to think that it's some magic line in the sand. It's not. All that means is it's a very, very important level of liquidity. So whatever happens from a point of control, either way will determine what that point of control means. If they drop from a point of control, it means it was selling. If they lift from a point of control, it means it was buying. And therefore, they're telling you that. Now, I want to ask you a question. Why does that make sense? Because you got about maybe 10 big, big banks in the world that control all the money. And that's the only ones that are able to make those imprints in any market, not retail traders. So they can't hide from us. They can't hide from us. We can hide from them. They have to be able to show us what they're doing. Okay. So let me give you another example. Let's pick out a Forex market. Give me a Forex pair, guys. Which Forex market would you like me to look at? Euro yen, Ricardo says. Anybody else have any other Euro yen? You got Forex traders in here? <laughs> Euro dollar, Euro yen. I need a couple more in here and we'll pick, pick, the, pick the baseline. I got the Aussie dollar here. We could look at the Aussie dollar loaded. I can then we'll look at another one if you want. Um, Ricardo says Aussie dollar. I have the Aussie dollar here. We can look at this just to keep it. I'll just look at it on a bigger perspective first. Okay. Let's just take a look at this for a second. Can you guys see the overall? Um, let's go in here. Are you guys able to see, and I'm going to turn the market profile off for a second. So if we go in here and I just turn, like we can see this market's trending down, yes? Okay, this market's trending down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn, I'm going to turn this off for a second. I'm going to turn all the candles off. And I just want you to take a look at this. This is where a lot of traders are like, what the heck, right? And I want you to kind of look at a couple things. The biggest things to me that stand out, that point of control, if we move down, this one was the biggest point of control. Very close, these are very close here, but this one I think is a bit bigger. This one here, And that. So if I'm going down, I just, I want, it doesn't need to be difficult. And I think this is where a lot of traders get so confused because everybody thinks you need to be smart to make a lot of money doing this. You don't need to be smart, guys. You just need to keep it simple. Okay. If the market's going like this, as long as the market makes a lower low in price and the market's staying down, look to short these nodes on the right side of structure. So let's say the market came down here, boom, I would look to short that. If the market traded down below here, I would look to short that. If the market traded down below here, I would look to short the biggest one, not this one. If the market traded below here, I would look to short this node. If the market traded down here, I'd be a little bit concerned of this because this one's stronger. 
I wouldn't trade this unless we broke way down here and then traded that. Let's turn on the price bars. We broke the structure here. Lower low in price, they came up, point of control short. We did, we made a lower low here, okay? But we did not drop significantly from here. So remember what I said earlier about, <laughs> I said you need to drop significantly from the levels. We did not drop from any of this volume here yet. We dropped here to test it here, but it wasn't a big drop. We dropped significantly here. We just missed it. That would be considered a missed trade here. This one overshot it. Okay. We dropped decent from here. This was a decent drop. We came up to test it. Trade here, trade here for sure. These two were for sure trades. This one you would have been missed the fill on this one. This one is weaker. This is a lower point of control. And this one, we haven't traded below it yet. Give me another market, any market. Euro, USD. You want to look at any Forex pair? Let's do it. Forex. Euro, Yen. This is a monthly auction, guys. <laughs> look at those shorts. Sexy. Market traded lower here and here, lower low, okay? As the market broke down in here, I'd still be looking to short, never got up there. Market broke down from here, boom, wicked short, wicked short. <laughs> You're trading with the market. This is what you considered markup, accumulation, distribution, right? You talk about the, 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 the this, is, this is big institutions building, boom. Big institutions building, boom. They come up, they load up, they drop down, okay? Now, this trade down here, just to so understand this, this trade down here, at this time when we got back down here like this, when we trade below this area like this, and we come up to test this node right there, <laughs> this one would have been a stop out, okay? And I'll explain why, because it's a pretty significant node. They, they, depending on if you're scalping, let's just kind of put things into perspective. If you're scalping, there's no way you could have lost money on this trade. And here's the thing, your entry is at the point of controls between here and here, okay? And your stop loss on this is a factor of the average range, minimum to loss. <laughs> depending on where you exited, this did come down here as a T1 or a T half a T1, depending on your trade management, you got a reaction off that. But if you were a levels trader, you would have got stopped out. Okay, they came back up to test this volume. See here, why is it working to the shorts? This is the higher point of control by, this is lower, right? Remember what I said about the bigger nodes? This one is not as big as this one. Uh, well, it depends. Uh, this is a 30 minute ATR, Richard. So, be, but my stop finder doesn't just look at the ATR. So if I go in here and add the stop finder, I'll go in here, I'll show you. Okay. Let's go on. I'll just show you what I'd be doing in this level here. <laughs> so the way the stop finder works, and this is a free indicator, you can use it for all of your trading systems if you choose. You just need to be a subscriber to our trade room to get access to it. Okay, and uh, what the stop finder does is it helps me plan the volatility risk of every trade area. So if I was trading this level here, okay, on this point of control, okay, then I'd want to know at that time what was the volatility grid here. Hmm, okay, so if I go down and I take a look at what that stop finder is telling me at that location, I have I have an area of volatility. Okay, <laughs> current volatility was here. which means my minimum stop can be here and my maximum stop needs to be here. Like my biggest stop only needs to be the average. It's 133 pipettes, it's 13 pips. <laughs> this is set to pipettes, not to pips. Excuse me. There's 10 pipettes to every pip. 
So this would be considered 78 pipettes or, you know, that, or seven pips, this is 13 pips. So if you look at 78, so it's an eight pip stop minimum, 13, 14 pip stop maximum, okay? So because this is where the volatility is. So you don't need to be trading max stops out here when you're not there. But if I'm out here right now, if I'm sitting there, then I'd need my minimum stop would be here and my maximum stop would be here. And this is just a volatility gauge that tells us the condition of the market. So if I'm coming into this level like this right here, okay, and I'm looking to plan this trade from the, let's just say we got in a little early and you got aggressive, right? Let's take a, an actual ruler, okay? 133 is the average stop. What was the minimum stop on this? Right there. The minimum from a scalp position on this would be eight, eight. And that's if you got a sloppy entry. Normally you're entering your front running the point of control. So what you do is you come in and you front run the point of control like that. So your, max, your minimum stop is eight pips. So if you're looking at that, Like that's a that's a one to one position right there. I mean, you, you you're scalping that level. You're out on the next bar, but if you're holding that level for a bigger trade, depends. The next trade would be at volume. So th there's two ways to manage your positions based off volatility or based off volume. The next target would be at the volume levels down here. Okay, and that's kind of goes hand in hand with over this in this environment when we came back down to retest this. Remember we said about this up here. If I took the volatility at that time, minimum stop would be here. Even if I took the entry at the lower node like that, you, at minimum stop, you would have got high ticked. But even if you took the current volatility at 11 pips, a lot of traders don't want to go minimum. They want to take the current volatility. That's 11. So that would be, you'd be at 11 pips right here. That'd be right there. So current volatility on this was 11. Even if you got in at that lower node down here for this trade that looked like it got stopped out, but let's take a look at the risk reward on this, okay? You would have come 80% to your target. 80% to your, 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 your initial target at a one-to-one. -one. A lot of times scalpers are not going the full one-to-one -one on their exits. They're peeling out at a half a one, they're going in at one-to-one, -one, they're going at one and a half to one because they're scalping. It just depends on your exit, but this would have at least given you some movement before it blew through. But the next trade hit again up here. The difference between these two levels, and I'll explain this, is the volatility. When we got up here, guess what? The volatility increased, yes? So this is where if you're coming back up, I would not trade this because it was already tested. This is a dangerous trade. Even though it worked, it's dangerous. You want me to look at another Forex pair? You want me to look at futures? I'm all about calling trades. Let's try and find the next one. You tell me. Give me a market, guys. Help me out. I'm here to help you guys learn this. I want to show you how to make money on this. Crude oil. My stop got low ticked on crew today. I got low ticked on this low volume down here, but should have could have wood up. So let's take a look here. And this market was very bearish today, but we were looking for a long bounce play. And uh, I got T1, but I, I got kicked out on the rest of the position. So let's talk about this. Um, Keith, I'm, I'm loading, uh, but I'm loading it in merge view. I've got 60 days on the monthly. This is a monthly. I could go to the dailies. I'm just using the, the, the monthly because it's a little simpler to see the point of controls, right? And you could use the dailies or the weeklies. I'll just go over here to the dailies. Let's take a look at crude oil. I'll just keep it on the dailies for a second. There, same thing. 
So just so you know that when you're using our macro profile software, you have three modes, daily, weekly, monthly. And most of us are using the dailies because we're day trading, right? The monthlies and the weeklies are just really bigger volume nodes. But what you can do is you can take a look at crude oil here. So let's just talk about the point of controls on this node here. And I'm using the merged view just to keep it simple. I can bring this down to two ticks there. So let's just go in here for a second and turn off the price bars. So if the market's trading down, then I wanna be shorting the highest nodes, okay? But if the market's trading up, I wanna be buying the highest nodes. The structure is up on this market. Just so you understand this structure is up. This was here. This came in like this higher high in price. We could not get above that point of control, which means it's still acting as resistance. So when they came back down, they came back down to that node. Now I took this trade today in the trading room. I re-entered because I, I got I made a mistake and I like to admit when I make mistakes because I don't make them again. This is very important that when you see a node like this and you see that type of a wick, that's them testing this volume. So I should not have taken the first trade. And that's me just being experienced telling you when you make a mistake or when you don't. Because I am a trader guys, so I, I need to share that with you. This here is the next trade. I re-engaged, I re-entered here. I re-entered here, okay? Now, at the time of this trade, I was using the stop finder as well. So let's go in here and add the stop finder. And I'll just explain so you can see activity and you can understand the concept for the strategy. At the time of this, the volatility was very large. Current volatility was very large and I was trading with a much tighter stop. So I actually put myself in harm's way a little bit more than I should have due to the condition of the market. Now, another thing too is the S&P went to the bottom of the Titanic today. So crude oil can often be pulled in that direction, right? But I want to explain a couple things. The entry for this can be right here at the edge of this level. Right there. There's two stops for this environment. When you have maximum risk, when you're sitting here really, really big at 30 ticks, I think I had like a 15 tick stop. Okay, so I had a 15 tick stop and it, I got a reaction. I did collect my first target on that. I did get my first target, but I normally don't move my stop to break even until my third, my second targets hit when I'm scaling out like this. So my stop was like here, okay? Now there's two ways to place your stop on these nodes. And this is super, super important. You have a volatility stop or you have a volume stop. Doesn't need to be difficult. The volume needs to be at the low volume. So if I had my volume stop, it should have been there or even in, in, in the node. I normally like to put it right at the, in the middle of the node like this. Because in that way, if they come in to suck into the volume, volume takes time to do their business. Now, if I was using the volatility stop, so you guys understand this, you have three grids here, max, average, and minimum. We're trading above the maximum. So that tells me a little bit about this market. It's like, whoa, wait a second. <laughs> My current stop on that at that time was 30 ticks. It should have been, I could have been 30 or at the very least 25. And if I go and we put a ruler in here, 17, 25 would have been the current, uh, the maximum, but the current volatility was technically 30 ticks. 
So when you look at that, that is where the actual stop loss based off volatility could have been. But if you look at where the volume is, it's kind of close, right, down here. So at the, at the risk of, you know, being low ticked, this is where they came. Look, they came right down here. <laughs> and that's where the volume is really important to understand this. Now, the only reason it did that is because the S&P was a shit show market today. So realistically, if they, the market wasn't selling off so heavy, that would never have taken so much heat. That's just correlation for you. Okay. And today was an outlier day. So on outlier days, you just go with the flow. Okay. So this still produced a profit from a levels trade. You just need to be aware of the volatility of this market and know that. Now, the difference here is, is this is not a trade short because we're going with up structure and you do not want to trade this long until they do this. As soon as they break out from this point of control, they do this and they show you they're going this way. This now becomes the next trade. Make sense, guys? You guys learning something from today? Did you guys get a little bit out of this? You guys, you guys like it? It helps you? I mean, yes, that this is something you enjoy. Because a lot of traders, there are some traders out there, and I think there's some other educators that teach point of control trading. The difference is they're trading it only reversals. I have a hard time with that because I just think that so many traders struggle with reversal trading. Right, and, and, and if I'm really gonna do my job in here and actually help you make money, because that's why you came here is to use these tools to make money, is you want to, uh, you, wanna, you wanna understand the best way. <laughs> 